Here he is. Harry Brent, I've got no money. It's the mortgage and four kids. Uh, what do you turn in here? Pull over here. No, pull over. All right, and stop. She's a pretty girl. I can always watch a pretty girl. She's Tracy Fisher, daughter of Colonel Stuart Fisher. Yes, the U.S. Army colonel who disappeared a couple of months ago. Disappeared being the polite euphemism for defected? Possibly. All we know is that he came to Europe for a holiday, got as far as Stockholm, and then disappeared. Did you expect him to write? No, but we did expect someone to claim him. He's one of the few experts on nuclear firing systems. And there are over 7,000 nuclear warheads stockpiled throughout the NATO countries. Dangerous knowledge. Mm. His last job was in the Pentagon, tactical missile section. Then he was due for retirement. But the Americans think now that he was disappointed at not being made a one-star general. So he might have defected. We have no means of knowing. No country has ever admitted, even secretly, that he ever went to them. Abducted? Again, we don't know. But the possibility of his knowledge being used by an adverse party is pretty alarming particularly in the light of the Foreign Minister's conference in Paris next week. And now his daughter is coming to England. To look for him? To meet him. The Americans have been intercepting her mail. Every telephone call. Two weeks ago, he made contact. Why should a defector want to come to Britain? Perhaps he's been here all the time. Hiding out in one of the embassies. Anyway, Tracy Fisher arrives at 2.30 today. You enjoy looking at a pretty girl? That's what you'll be doing. Who's my controller? Lane. Ah, I remember him from the Caribbean. So, we're working with the Americans. Fisher is their man, Quiller. This will be a cooperative effort. Will it? You are out of your mind. Why? Because I want security for the people of this world. 
Freedom from this terrible, destructive threat. No, Colonel, you're out of your mind not to agree with me. You are talking about the murder of possibly thousands of innocent people. I am talking about a demonstration of the appalling forces our scientists have let loose and on the opening day of that Paris conference. Oh, what a joke that is. You're right. For 30 years, the foreign minister has been sitting around discussing the spread of nuclear weapons and achieving nothing when others sit up and take notice. Look, how can you pose as a humanitarian and yet contemplate such mass destruction? Because I am more concerned with the future of the whole human race, not a few thousand British. I won't do it. Oh, I think you will. Your daughter will be arriving soon, Colonel. Tracy? Yeah, we uh, contacted her on your behalf. She'll be arriving pretty soon. Then you'll meet her. Then perhaps we can start work, all of us. It erodes the brain. Damages the kidneys and shortens the lifespan. You must be Quiller. Yes. Maybe they should post you to a dry state. I haven't let anybody down yet. You don't have to worry. I don't. First person you let down will be you. Thanks for the sermon. Where's your room? I'm in the room above. She's in there? That's where she'll be checking in, yeah. Nice, neat. You're miles ahead of us on gimmicks. But then you invented Disneyland. <laughs> Blaine's at the airport? He's tailing her from there, yeah. Well, what if he makes contact there, or en route? Nah. Nah, they won't move so soon. I agree, it's unlikely. Just in case I have someone covering the route, too. Well, why wasn't I told? Because I hadn't met you then. Now I have, and I've told you, right? Why should she come here? Why not London? It's quiet here. More difficult to make contact. Well, it seems they thought it up as a cover. Back in the States, she's a history student. There's a lot of old ruins around here. So I see. Small world. How are you, Lane? Oh, like before. Worried. You? Still breathing? All right, all right. So you said hello. How was it, Lane? Nothing. No car, no tail. Nobody even breathed in her direction. But she spooked. One eye over her shoulder the whole time. She's waiting for something. Shouldn't somebody be minding the store? Lane. Oh, there was one guy at the airport along the route. I guess one of yours. Yes. Now, how do we play this? Well, find Fisher, that's all that matters. All right. There has to be a close man, one they spot and probably lose. They may have spotted you already. Okay, I'll be the fall guy. And a backup man they don't lose, that's you, Brady. All right. And a man in the middle, a freelance who doesn't belong to this group at all. That's me. Okay. From now on, you don't know me, but keep in touch. Okay, come and get her now. She looks well, Colonel. Where is she? Oh, you'll be seeing her as soon as we can get to her. Come on. She being watched? Yeah. Uh, how many? One so far. Well, there'll be others. It's going to be difficult, tricky. Nah, come on, it's no sweat. As we keep on saying, Colonel, nothing's impossible. With any luck, you'll be seeing your daughter tomorrow, providing she can follow her instructions. Over here. Oh, 
wonder you've lived so long. Well, I mean to live a lot longer. What do you want, Len? She's booked a coach tour out to see the castle. She's a history student. Come on, Lane, what do you really want? Brady worries me. He spent most of his time behind the desk, not much field experience. And uh, he hits the bottle pretty hard, too. And uh, I think he's out to make a reputation for himself. That kind really bugs me. That bug me, too. I'll be watching you, Lane. Then I'll leave to get some sleep. <laughs> They hit me. I never saw them, I swear. That doesn't matter. What matters is that we lost the girl. Listen, I didn't lose the girl. You were the freelance. Well, that's fair. That's right, you didn't lose her. But she's gone just the same, and we don't know where. How's it going? Everything's fine. Tracy. about they wouldn't tell me anything they said you would explain dad why are you here who are these men 
Uh, I have a plan, Tracy, that I believe will save us all, but so far I've failed to convince your father he's a very stubborn man. Aren't you, Colonel? I told you! I refuse, absolutely! Up until now, but maybe now your daughter will persuade you? You leave her out of it, Perry! What is all this about? Would you be kind enough to explain, Colonel? You can come in now. Nothing. <laughs> you must have seen something. You. You would get caught like that. Don't be nice to me, Len. Happens. We all know that. It just happens. Why blame anyone? Least of all, yourself. I always blame myself. Yeah. But you couldn't have known. I should have guessed and paid to make educated guesses. So you guessed. <laughs> Are you married? A word like that frightens me. You know, that frightens me. You've broken your back, a lot of complications. Your chances are 50-50. Thanks. I've been asking, but they wouldn't tell me. Thanks. Stop thanking me. It would help. If you saw something... I saw two men. One nondescript, the other had a scar on his forehead. I photographed him. They checked him out with our records. He's no one we know. But they slugged Brady. Hard. Not that hard. 50-50 chance. I shouldn't be this amused. You rest. I'll drop by again later. A scar. On his fart. Yes, he might have been in a car crash sometime. Why? We hear everything <coughs> to do with Americans. Everything. There was a guy, Harry something, a couple of days ago. <coughs> Got drunk. Ran off the road. <coughs> he died. He was seen with a man with with that sort of scar. I must go now, sir. Well, Colonel? Look, I told you before, the answer is no. Interesting drug, this. If taken to excess, it can affect your heart. Leave him alone. <laughs> Roll up his sleeve. Now, wait a minute. Are you going to cooperate? No. Much as I deplore this sort of thing, Colonel, you leave me no choice. <laughs> the killer! Killer! <laughs> Who's that? Harry Brent, American salesman with a German company. Killed the other day. Drove into the river. Drowned. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I thought maybe he'd burst into flames. You got any bourbon? 
I don't. This man Brent was a drinker, though. Empty bottles in his car and traces in his stomach. So? Brent stayed at this hotel. That's all? No. The hotel porter was the last person to see him alive. Leaving with a man with a scar on his forehead. That's all? For the moment. See the scar? Yeah, coincidence. Well, two coincidences. Same hotel, same man with scar. You think maybe he was Colonel Fisher in disguise? In this business, anything is possible. And two coincidences should never be overlooked. Look, you play games. I got a report to get off. Mr. Lindorf? Yes? Oh, come in, please. You have a report to get off. It was good of you to come up. I was here anyway. It is a terrible thing. I have to call up his wife and tell her. Now I have to arrange for the body to be sent home. A terrible thing. Harry was a good man. How long had he worked for you, Mr. Leindorf? Oh, more than ten years. He was the first American salesman I hired, in fact, uh, when the business was starting to grow. Would you say he was average, straightforward? Oh, absolutely. I would trust Harry with... Uh... He was a fine man. This was supposed to be a fun trip, too, eh? No hard selling, just consolidating a few established orders. A nice PR trip. A fine man. No hang-ups, no dark shadows about him. You think there's something strange, too, don't you? Well, I certainly do. Harry getting drunk? No. Harry didn't drink. He had a heart murmur. Uh, nothing much, nothing but enough to frighten him. Harry hadn't touched hard liquor in five years. What was he doing in this town? Why not one of the big cities? Why here? Because of his brother. Brother? Yes, yes. He's stationed not far from here. Well, Harry was so excited about the two of them getting together that I gave him... Harry had a brother here stationed in the services? Yes, uh, American Air Force, uh, a sergeant, on a base not far from here. Is this him? Yes. That's him. That's Frank. Somebody will have to tell him, too. Well, why don't I take that chore off your hands, Mr. Landorf? Time's running out, Colonel. That nuclear conference starts the day after tomorrow, and I want my protest to have maximum effect. Now, we can get the warhead. We can transport it. What we need to know is how to explode it. How many times do I have to tell you? No! Your daughter's very beautiful, Colonel. She's young, has a lot to live. Look at her. I should warn you, Colonel, that the third injection will cause irreversible damage. Well? Perry. All right. All right. Okay. Your persona is not very grouter here at the moment, Colonel. The Fisher day back. Questions are being asked. Quick answers are your forte, Angus. Did you get the information I wanted? I'm not accustomed to being summoned from a very important dinner. Did you get it? It wasn't easy. Even a simple request like this, it wasn't easy. The Americans are becoming rather reluctant to give information, and I can't say I blame them after the Fisher... De Barclay, yes, you said that. This is good enough anyway. Sergeant Frank Brent is stationed at Wyndham Down. What happens there? What are you chasing, Quilla? Will this lead to Fisher? Is there a chance that we can recoup our losses? I haven't seen that one before. Hundred yards sprint or all in wrestling. You haven't given me an answer? No, I haven't, because I haven't got one yet. Windham Down is a Thunder Sky base.
Sorry, sir, this is a private road to Strictly. Do you have any business here, sir? I'd like to see somebody on the boat. Do you have a pass, sir? No. Absolutely no permission unless you have a pass. I'm sorry, sir. I'd like to see Frank Brett. Sergeant Frank Brent. He's on this base, isn't he? There's a lot of men on this base, sir. Well, look, Frank's brother Harry is dead. I was a friend of his. I'd like to tell him about it. If you wait here last at the guard house, maybe they can... Hey, that is Frank! Sir! Sir! You can in my kitchen. Save yourself a lot of bother. Well, thanks. I saw and the man in that photograph are not the same. The man you saw was Sergeant Francis Howard Brent. You think we'd let anybody, anybody into a place like that without running them through a fine tooth comb? I was out there today. I was with a security officer for two hours. I saw Brent's prints, his screening, his clearance, every document that's ever been to do with him. The only thing I didn't see was the scar on his navel. Not the same man. And who told you that was Frank Brent? Mr. Leindorf was sure. And he's gone back to Germany. You trust his word against the whole weight of our security, you know what I think? I think you're trying to divert attention from that last foul-up you made. Well, that's all down to me now, is it? I thought that was an international foul-up. You were the one they slugged. What's so special about Sergeant Brent, anyway? His brother drowned before they could meet. An accident. And Frank Brent works on a nuclear missile base. <sighs> Doesn't ask much of the imagination. Look. I'll make a deal with you. Get me into that base. Let me speak to your security no officer. Chance. All I ask is five minutes. Now, mister, you'll become a dirty word with my people. You think guys like Lane are expendable? They're blaming you. Yeah. The chairboard boys always blame the real people. Now, why? figure our survival rate is low and it's easier to blame dead men <laughs> I don't blame you I know have you heard anything Lane you know about Wyndham Down top secret all right you know about places like Wyndham Down could be Someone posted there, they'd have to be cleared in the States. Any chance of their screening being rigged over there? Never heard of it happening. Then it could only be rigged on the base itself, which means someone on the inside. You're on to something. Perhaps. I have to get into that base. It's not easy. Those places are almost airtight. I have to try. Good luck. See you. Okay, let's go. Huh? Tracy, I said let's go. All the firing codes on the missile control packages would have been changed. All of them? The moment Fisher disappeared. Then why bother to kidnap him? They must have known that from the start. Fisher is an expert. I can only presume that he can make his own program. What you're saying is once they get hold of that warhead, there isn't a thing we can do. Yes, but they haven't got hold of a thing yet, Quilla. That must be their plan. Then it's up to you to see that it fails. And if you don't... So... There is this. No one is saying that you have to use it. Why not just give me a common or garden hand grenade? Because this is 20 times more lethal. 
It has a jamming device with an auto-destruct. No, thanks. Oh, well, just in case you change your mind, I will have it planted. That map reference. Him on the wire. All right, what's the story? Seen him before, just this morning, hanging around asking about you. Me? Something about your brother being dead. I knew that, so local cops told me. You knew Harry? Been like that since we held him, just won't say a word. Oh, I'll say a word, but not to you. Your security officer. I'll tell it all to him. And only him. I'll take him to the Major. Harry? Hey. Sir, there's a guy here who wants to see the security officer. Send him in. Okay. You want to see the security officer? Alone. I know it sounds crazy, but it was the only way I could get to see you. I think Frank Brent is an imposter. If I'm right, that can mean only one thing. You have someone here on the inside. Go on. There are nuclear warheads on this base. There could be a dozen reasons for them wanting to get in here. Destroy the base, disrupt it. You recognize me? Good. In about eight hours' time, the whole world's going to know me. Eight hours, starting now. Consider the state of the world today. Tension, violence, minority groups fighting each other, nations on the brink of war. And then consider the proliferation of nuclear equipment, so-called peaceful reactors, but each with enough plutonium to make a highly effective nuclear bomb. 
and only needs one lunatic general or one power crazy dictator to lose his head and bang. More than 30 years since those terrifying images of Hiroshima shook the world into accepting a tacit ban on the use, you're not the manufacturer, mind you, the use of nuclear weapons. Now those pictures are almost forgotten. A lot of people who think. But do people think? They watch television, play golf, and ignore the existence of those appalling weapons. So you see yourself as some sort of world savior? It's the only way. A horrifying demonstration of the power of nuclear weapons that will shock the world. Make all reasonable people demand international control and inspection of nuclear bases. Well, well the world might shrug off the destruction of a minor city, but the destruction of the centre of London will bring people to their senses and make them ban weapons forever. You'd never get hold of a warhead. There's 7,000 of them in Europe. 50 right here in Wyndham Down. It's happening. Go on, over there.
While the Colonel completes his part of the operation, you better dispose of the truck. Right. Okay, Colonel, you know what we want from you. A radio-controlled detonating mechanism. I think you'll find everything you listed over here. Keller, listen to me. Oh, there's no time left to argue. In half an hour, that warhead has to be primed out of here and on its way. Keller! Haven't you seen your daughter suffer enough? You want to send the detonating signal from here? Right. Perfect location. Close to London. Not too close. Once that truck has been planted as a decoy, it'll be the last place they'll think of searching. Where are you going to put the warhead? Open car park. Opposite the Houses of Parliament. What? Well, it couldn't be more convenient. Right. You finished? Yes. Thank you, Colonel. Hudson. Coming right up. One car park pass, one rail ticket. Okay. Yeah. The train back here leaves Waterloo at 10 minutes to 12. I suggest you're on it. Clearance to be here, Mr. Brady? Listen, everything's turned upside down. At your end, possibly, but we are trying to preserve a certain savoir faire. So I noticed. So you're running for cover, too, huh? Following the precept that discretion is the better part of valor, yes. We're moving to Norfolk until. Until they explode that warhead. Norfolk? Well, they, whoever they are, have issued a communique threatening a big city. We are being discreet. The government has already gone to ground. So I imagine have your embassy people too. Well, what about the rest of the population? A panic would benefit nobody. You mean they're going to explode that warhead right here in London? Yes, I imagine they are. Like you said, man, we left the truck at the quarry west of Salisbury. Just enough off the road so it looks like we hit it. They should find it pretty quick. You hear that, Colonel? Salisbury? That's a hundred miles to the west. That's where they'll be looking for us while we're all snug here. The warhead there. This is the way I always planned it. On the opening day of that nuclear conference. They're taking the whole of central London. Houses of Parliament, Downing Street, Buckingham Palace, Trafalgar Square, Oxford Street. What about the people? enough to activate the transmitter. 
You haven't given them enough time to evacuate. Evacuate? You know, that's a mistake people always make, giving them time. Time to parley, time to soften your will. Look, you'll kill 90% of the people in that area. At this time of day, that could be a, a million people. Well, that's right. to detonate in two minutes from now. I can't do it. Get that girl in here. What are you going to do? Come on. Keller? Ah. Keller! The third frequency, Colonel. seconds. One of those cases where a firearm would have been the solution. Perhaps you'll remember that in future. I still prefer my methods, thanks. Can't you ever concede? Any news of Blaine? Should there be? I'll go and find out. I'm sorry. Was he a great friend of yours? Just someone I worked with. <laughs> 